Via AMD, Overclocks UK sent me this rather awesome gaming PC. It features an AMD Ryzen 7 1700, also a GTX 1080 from Zotac, 16 gigs of Team Group uh, DDR4 memory, and a Seuss Crosshair 6 Hero board, what seemingly is an unbranded Acer Tech uh, 240 mm liquid cooler, and uh, a Samsung 960 500 gig uh, Evo drive, the M.2, which is awesome, and I believe a two terabyte Barracuda uh, Seagate drive as well, all housed inside a Fantex and through Lux, which is actually pretty awesome. Also the tempered glass edition. So overall, a pretty awesome system. And in this video, we're hopefully gonna find out how it performs, if it's worth your money, how it's uh, you know built and all that sort of stuff. And as I said, if it's actually worth some dollars. On the front of the chassis you'll find the front I.O. This is uh, mostly hidden under a very nice set, uh, fairly easy to move cover. This is two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, headphone microphone jack, a reset button and an RGB controller switch. This switch purely uh, controls the LEDs that are built into the case on the top and the front on both sides. And feel free to take a look at how many exactly colors you have here, but I think it's somewhere about 10. It isn't a you know full RGB in the sense that you have 16.8 million colors to choose from. And this isn't tied to the motherboard either. So despite the fact that there is also an RGB LED strip inside the case that's connected to the ASUS Aura uh, header, um, you cannot uh, sort of link the two together. They're not connected. So while you you can have RGB cycling inside the chassis, you've got to pick a color or be manually pushing it yourself uh, on the uh, outside to do with that one in mind. On the bottom of the front of the chassis, you'll find the main air intake. It's actually a fairly stylish case overall and very well built. The, uh, so I guess, left-hand side has the main tempered glass panel. This is also attached very nicely, only two thumb screws towards the front of the case, with then the rest of the panel being on a hinge, similar to the other Fantex cases, which is actually a very nice implementation, and I'm really glad they went with this way, rather than the standard four screws. This is a lot easier to work with. You can open it easily or take the sh uh, panel off if you want to, and it's very easy to get into the system. So, as I said, really impressed with that. Taking a look inside the case at the system, you can see that it's been built very nicely. Cable management is pretty excellent. There is no uh, sort of ex cable extensions or cable sleeves here, uh, but using the stock power supply cables, they've done a very nice job at making this look very good, so I am very pleased with that. Of course, uh, the overall style of the build is also excellent. The RGB LEDs at the top, uh, plus the RGB LEDs on the motherboard, do make for a very nice, yet somewhat subtle show. The only main note that I would uh, kind of uh, make a point of is that the fans on the uh, AIO cooler up the top, especially the one to the right hand side, looks like it's been over tightened and is sort of flexing the actual fan itself. So uh, I don't know whether that's just to be, you know, it's too tight and perhaps it's uh, actually fairly close to the radiator or whether the screws are too small or whatever but it is uh, kind of the only main flaw in the system. As I said, cable management on the back side is fantastic. You actually have a little fan controller in there as well to keep everything nice and quiet. And actually when the system is running, it is actually really very quiet. I'm very impressed with that. And as I said, uh, in terms of temperatures, it's also really impressive. I think you're looking at about 77 degrees for the GPU. Obviously that one is mostly controlled by the GPU itself. And I think it was about 65 degrees on the CPU at its maximum while gaming. So again, a really impressive temperature, especially since it's so quiet. When it comes to gaming performance, I do have a few notes here. This came pre-installed with Windows 10 and actually came pre-installed with the Creators update that adds game mode, which means that I cannot use Present Mon Launcher, which is the program that uh, myself and a few other people wrote to uh, basically benchmark Doom and uh, other Vulkan and DX12 titles, as Microsoft have decided to break event tracing for Windows, which is the main way to do performance monitoring on Windows 10, especially with these new APIs. So that means that I'm not gonna be testing Doom for this specific uh, you know, PC, and I, I am working on some fixes for that, and hopefully we can get around that, but uh, nonetheless, um, that's just a quick note I wanted to make. 
I also wanted to make another note that uh, I did have a few driver problems with this as well. Just with the NVIDIA driver, I had to uh, use DDU to completely remove the NVIDIA driver multiple times to try and get any sort of resemblance of some decent results, as especially while running 1080p on a 4K monitor, there seems to be a bit of a bug with the NVIDIA driver where if you install a new version of the driver, while uh, obviously not completely uninstalling the old one first, then you actually have a, a few issues and severe performance differences, which means that the GTA numbers especially are a little bit off not 100% confident on those, but uh, especially with Dirt Rally, I did manage to retest those and get some fairly confident results, and 3D Mark and Unigen Heaven are perfectly fine too. Starting off with 3D Mark Fire Strike, we can see that the 18,000 points, uh, give or take, that we have here, especially at 1080p, is really very impressive, about 10,000 at 1440p and about 5,500 at 4K. Dirt Rally using Ultra Settings was about 135 FPS at 1080p with 105 for 1440p and a really impressive 67 FPS at 4K. GTA 5 is also really impressive with 81 FPS at 4K, about 150 FPS at 1080p and about 134 at 1440p, so very playable and very enjoyable at very high settings there. And Unity in Heaven, we're seeing some pretty decent results as well. Obviously, this one is not optimized for 4K, so we're seeing 41 FPS, but at 1080p, we're seeing 169. So if you're after a pretty awesome gaming PC, especially one with an 8-core CPU for uh, you know video editing and gaming and stuff like that, and especially if you're going for 1440p or 4k gaming then this is certainly a very impressive system when it comes to value for money they really don't tra uh, charge much more for you know the privilege of having it pre-built for you and all that sort of stuff it also comes incredibly packaged and a little bit too packaged actually it was very difficult to get into but nonetheless it came in perfect condition with really no issues at all so very impressed with that there and as i said it's just a really awesome system at a fairly expensive but still pretty decent price point when it comes to scoring for me this is going to be a 4 for value for money with a 4.5 for performance, a 4.5 for functionality and a 5 for styling with a 4.5 for TechTeamDB score and I think a gold award. It's a fantastic system, it's really well built, very well cable managed, has a pretty awesome spec and of course you can customize that on Overclockers UK's website as well so feel free to take a look at this uh, system and this configuration uh, as close as I can get to it at the current time as uh, parts do interchange so I think the graphics card is the main difference differentiating part at the moment but nonetheless I'll leave a link to this configuration or as close to it as possible in the links in the description down below but uh, yeah either way this is a, a, a really impressive system and I'd love to know what you think is this uh, too overkill for you is this uh, you know not your style with the tempered glass and RGB LEDs let me know in the comments down below as I said if you want to know more about this PC and check out the price when and where you watch this take a look at the link in the description down below for you if you're buying anything else it'd be awesome if you use my uh, Amazon or Overclock UK affiliate links they do genuinely help me out and keep me making these videos on a Monday Wednesday Friday and nowadays Saturday basis so if you could do that that'd be fantastic I'd also really appreciate if you share the video that does definitely help whether it's this one or any of the other more generic kind of topic videos that I cover feel free to do that with any of them and of course subscribe if this is the first video you're watching from me I've also got a Facebook and Twitter page at TechTeamDB on both so feel free to take a look at those there's a merch link down there as well uh, there's some videos over here for you subscribe button over this side and I'm going to stop talking and let you get on with your life so uh, yeah thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video